Now, just a few minutes ago, we sat down with the SA Eco Film Festival director, Erica Schofield, to give us an overview of what's going on at the festival that starts off today and runs until the 30th of March. And now she's back, joined by marine scientists from uh, scientist from the Two Oceans Aquarium, Chris Lewis. He's so good, he, he's, he, look, he sounds like two people. Uh, <laughs> but he's here to break down the events of a gripping and stun stunningly captured uh, documentary called Chasing Coral. So, Chris, thank you very much for joining us as well. Uh, mm. But, Erica, I'll start off with you first because it yeah. sounds like Chasing Coral is leading the way in terms of pre-bookings. People yes. are really excited to see this and are really yeah. interested in this topic. Why is that? Well, it, it is a very slick and beautiful production, but I do think um, it's a testament to the power of film. Mm. It's not all of us get to go scuba diving. We don't get to see that incredible world. And coral is so beautiful and colorful. So when those images come back, um, they're en entrancing. Yeah. And then, of course, now with the devastation, um, those the image contrasts are so stark, it's an immediate emotional connection. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so I think that's probably why the story is doing so well and having such an impact. Mm -hmm. And when I think about Coral, I think back to all those David Attenborough films I've watched and uh, Blue Planet and things like that. Mm -hmm. And when you watch it, it's a beautiful thing to see, but there's little understanding, at least from my part, on how Coral helps to sustain the environment and why it is so important. So Chris, maybe you can shed some light on that. Okay, so the reason why Corals are so important is because mm -hmm. they protect the coastline. Um, so what they essentially do is they slow down wave action before it hits the shore, especially during surge storms and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, corals also have all these little nooks and crannies where different kinds of fish can live in, so mm -hmm. they have very high biodiversity of lots of different animals. And those animals in turn feed into feeding people and ecosystems around them. Yeah. So that's why they're very, very, very important. And of course, it's, it's like a chain reaction. Once one part of the ecosystem is affected, yes. you know that sooner or later, another part, and it ends up being us at the end of the day who end exactly. up suffering. Exactly, very big domino it. effect. Exactly. Talk to me about bleached coral. Uh, exactly what it is, how it occurs, and where the coral can then recover to... Okay, from bleaching. Yes. So what happens during bleaching is corals are animals that stay on one spot, okay? And they live in very clean oceans where technically they can't grasp a lot of food out of the water. So what happened over time was they have now a symbiotic relationship with algae yeah. that give them about 90 to more than 90% of their food through photosynthesis. Yeah. And because corals only survive in a certain range of temperatures, mm -hmm. what happens is as soon as the temperatures goes one or two degrees out of what they can tolerate, um, the corals eject these symbiotic algae in the tissues and yeah. they basically start starving to death. So before, the corals are colorful because the algae gives them the color, and afterwards they lose the color, and only the white skeleton is left because of the bleaching event happening. You're basically looking at, at dead bones when it's bleached like that. So is it then Almost possible? dead, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. so yeah. my question. <laughs> Can it then recover after that? So it depends on the stressor. So what stressed the animal, and how long the stressor endured. So let's take temperature, for example. If the water temperature increased by one or two degrees for one or two days, Within a few weeks' time, oh, and the water goes back to what it's supposed to be. Yes. Within a few weeks' time, the coral can be recolonized by the algae. Okay. That gives it food. But if the water temperature stays warm for a long period of time, essentially the coral cooks to death. So oh then they can't, they can't recover from that then. There's so much that I need to understand because you've just referred to it as an animal and not as a thing. Because when I look at it, I see a like hard a colorful rock. thing. <laughs> exactly. But it's what? It's a living... Yes. Organism. Yes, exactly. Okay, so, so clearly there's, there's lots for us to learn and to mm -hmm. understand and so much more the call and the importance of the call for you to go and check out all the information you need to on saecofilmfestival.com. You'll find information about the festival itself. As I said, it runs until the 30th of March and of course get your tickets to all the various events that they will be running as well. Krish, Erica, thank you very much. Thank you.